You suspect your patient has meningitis. You need to measure cerebrospinal fluid pressure. Your patient requires an injection for a myelogen. Each of these could be an indication for a lumbar puncture. The lumbar puncture is one of the easiest procedures to perform, but you must know the indications, risks, and possible complications. Diagnosis is the most common indication. Measuring cerebrospinal fluid pressure can be useful for determining the etiology of a headache. Injections are a third use for myelograms, anesthesia, or intrathecal chemotherapy. The only absolute contraindication to a lumbar puncture is infection of the overlying area. Relative contraindications include increased intracranial pressure or a bleeding abnormality. Generally, patients with a platelet count of 20,000 or more can safely undergo an LP. You will need protective equipment as required by OSHA. Don't forget a trash can. The spinal cord starts at C1 and ends at the level of L1, L2 as the conus medullaris and is secured to the coccyx by the phylum terminale. From the region of L2 to S2, the subarachnoid space of the spine forms the lumbar cistern, which contains cerebrospinal fluid. The nerve roots emerge laterally through the intervertebral foramina. Since the needle will be placed caudal to the termination of the spinal cord, there is little danger of paralysis with the lumbar puncture. For a lumbar puncture, the interspace of choice is L4, L5. The spinal cord has terminated by this level, and the interspace height allows easy access to the cistern. Other possibilities for an LP are at L3, L4, and L5, S1. Levels above L3 are not desirable, since the nerve roots are more likely to be in a fixed position rather than free-floating. Areas below S1 are difficult to penetrate, since the vertebral bodies of the sacrum are fused. A lumbar puncture penetrates these layers, the skin, the supraspinous ligaments, interspinous ligaments, and ligamentum flavum, then the epidural space, the dura, the subarachnoid membrane, and finally the subarachnoid space where CSF is obtained. The interspace, which is the target for the LP, is the space between the two vertebrae. This interspace is protected by the long spinous processes, which, in the cervical and thoracic spine, overlap each other. Going down the spinal column, the processes shorten, making the interspace more accessible. Flexing the spinal column further widens the interspace. When doing an LP, palpate the end of the spinous process and enter there. This entrance gives the greatest accessibility to the cistern. Aim 10 to 30 degrees cephalad. As shown here, you could almost go perpendicular. The decubitus position allows maximal flexion of the spine while keeping it aligned. Raise the bed as needed so that you are comfortable and can visualize your field. Make sure the light is adequate. Place your patient in the lateral decubitus position with the back close to the edge of the bed. The shoulders and iliac crests should be in perpendicular alignment to the spine. To help with this, put a pillow under the patient's head so that the external occipital protuberance and the spine are in the same horizontal plane. Flexion of the neck is not of great value here to heighten the interspace. Pillows can be placed between the knees to assist in keeping the iliac crests aligned. Double check to make sure you have everything you need. Have the patient draw his or her knees up to the chest to widen the spaces between the spinous processes. Use this method to find your target site. The advantage of using the upright position is in the ease of access to the landmarks and site with minimal need for patient cooperation. Patients who are obese, have breathing disorders, or who have obscured landmarks may benefit from this position.